Praise God, YouTube. Let's go. Listen to me. This is another episode of Running Through the Bible based on Daniel 12, 4, where knowledge will be increased when we go to and fro through his word. Praise God. Some woman tried to tell me, that's not what it means. That's exactly what it means. Knowledge would be increased in the last days. We will get revelation from this word and it'll make sense to us because we are the last of the last generation before the tribulation. So this is episode five, running through the Bible. This one's going to be epic. So yeah, listen to it, but make sure you got a Bible when you're doing this study with me. I'm telling you. Oh, praise God. Listen, I got to say this. I've never been live on YouTube. I will be going live on YouTube. I don't know when. Few days, maybe a week at the most. I'm in the middle of a monster Bible study trying to put it all together. I want to do it on the live. A uh, dear brother of mine told me that after I can push a button and then post it to my channel. So if you miss the live, you can rewatch it, you know, whenever you can. So I don't know anything about technology. I can barely push this button on the phone. So hopefully we get that done. But I will be going live. I'll let you know when I'm going live. You don't want to miss it. Lord's giving me stuff up here out of his word. All good, all pure, no hocus pocus. It's amazing. that. Listen, this live is truly going to be for people that are watching for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be specifically for us. It's utter gold. All right. I promised you pre-tribulation rapture in the Old Testament. I'm arguing with a joker right now. I've been studying the Bible for 40 years and there's no pre-trib proof, blah, 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 blah. So I've already given Revelation 3.10, Luke 21, 34 through 36, Isaiah 66, 7, you know, the man child was delivered before her pain came, all pre-trib. This one's going to cinch it up. So what I'm saying to you is get out of the dullness of your hearing. You've already made up your mind. So no matter what this crazy guy says on YouTube, you're just going to believe what you want to believe. Get out of that mode. And listen, I got to address this because, listen, we, we read a verse and then we think another thought. We read a verse and then we think another thought. We go, oh, that, that sounded pretty good. Where am I going to eat today? Oh, this. what am I going to do later today? We're a fast food brain thinking mentality people. We all do it, including me. God said, meditate on this. Consider this. Chew on this. We don't think anymore. So the ones railing against me, just because they don't believe your eschatology doesn't mean they're not saved. Well, is that true? Think about this. You got to, again, we're thinking now. We're thinking now. So are you arguing with me about pre-trib rapture or are you arguing with God? So what you're saying is an all-powerful, an all-loving God is going to judge this world. Mark of the beast, antichrist, demons hunting you down, sun darkened, sun hot, no food, no water, running for your life, four horsemen of the apocalypse, all hell breaking loose, 21 judgments from God, the antichrist and Satan doing his thing, all the fallen angels down here on earth, all that judgment day, day of the Lord, destruction. An all-powerful, all-loving, almighty God says to his bride, whom he loves, whom he handpicked for his son. Did you know that? The father handpicked the bride. Talk about the prearranged marriage. He handpicked each and every one. Each and every one. Jesus said, I'll lose none of those that you've given to me. All that you've given to me, Father, I won't lose any, and it'll be a perfect bride. Not one soul will have lost their salvation and blew it. They'll all be there. So this loving God 
whom we love because he chose us, saved us, opened our eyes. We can read scripture. We can read the signs of the times. This loving God, all-powerful, nobody can stay the hand of God, so he has a choice. He can send us into hell to be utterly destroyed, or he can snatch us out miraculously called the rapture and pull us up to marry his son. So we're in heaven marrying the Lord, nothing but joy, peace, riches, glory, and a glorified body while all hell's breaking here on loose. But you, it's just a matter of doctrine. It's not a salvation issue. It's not a salvation issue? Really? You're questioning the character of God. You're not arguing with me. I'm going to type another comment and tell him there's no such thing as pre-trib. You're calling out God's character. Let's see. All loving, all powerful God. Yeah, yeah. You'll send us through the tribulation to be slaughtered, to be starving, to be, you know, thirsty, can't get a drink. Everybody's hunting you down. What I'm about to show you in the scriptures is a done deal pre-tribulation rapture in the Old Testament. That's right. God declared the end from the beginning. It's all in there. Praise God. I'm telling you, this will blow you away. So if you think you're a scholar and you think you've been studying for 40 years, get your Bible out and pay attention and test everything that I'm saying. Test it all. And listen, the comments in my videos, look, God blew up the videos. You know, I just started doing videos on YouTube. So I told you, I'm trying to get to all of them. It's over a thousand. I don't know how many it is. I'm trying to get to all of them. So if you see me comment on somebody above you and somebody below you, if you, you're probably not going back to check, but it probably means your comment was gibberish or I just didn't get to it. So, <laughs> but I'm trying to get to all of them. Oh, praise God. Heavenly Father, let the rest of this video to be to your glory. Your word is glorious, Lord. You are glorious. You are perfect in everything you do and say. We love this book. I pray right now in Jesus' name, amen. And listen, all the, all the ones that you're sending me, beautiful comments. This is an answer to my prayer, blah, blah, blah. All that good stuff. It warms my heart. It lifts up my spirit. It keeps me going. I love it. All glory to God. Thank you for chiming in and letting me know that. It's a big deal to me. So you said it's a big deal to you. It's a big deal to me. Praise God. Let's go. This is pre-tribulation rapture in the Old Testament. You know what we do here. We do double glasses and then it's all business. Here we go. Praise God. Let's go. Isaiah 57. Isaiah is unbelievable. Isaiah 57. All right, I got to calm down a little bit. Collect my thoughts. Here we go. Isaiah 57, verse 1. The righteous perish, and no man lays it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Okay, now you probably didn't catch it there. I'm going to break it down. The righteous perish. Since when do the righteous perish? Okay, just think about that. And, and by the way, this is a funeral verse. They read this at funerals for Christians. The righteous perish and no man lays it to heart. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks about it. And merciful men, that means faithful men. So get the gist of what God is telling you here. And faithful men, merciful men are taken away. When in God's history have the righteous all perished and all the faithful men were taken away? None considering, again, they're not considering, twice God said this, no man lays it to heart. And now he says, all verse one, Isaiah 57, one. None considering that the righteous is taken away, taken away. So they didn't really die naturally, right? Taken away 
from the evil to come. So think about if we read this verse, like I just said, so all the righteous perish, all the faithful men taken away for the evil to come. So did God kill everybody so evil could have its day? No. When you dig this out, the word in the, in the Strong's is H6. It means perish. That's why these guys translated it perish, the King James guys. But when you look down, and I got the screen up on my iPad right now, it means vanish and escape. So if they would have knew the context of this, they would have said, the righteous vanish. The righteous vanish. The righteous escape. Escape. That's what the word means. They just, but it's mostly used as perish. So they put perish in there. But when you read it, it doesn't make any sense as perish. It's escape. The righteous escape and no man lays it to heart. And faithful men are taken away. They escaped. They vanished. They vanished in the rapture. Are you getting this? Don't worry. There's a lot more. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. We are pre-tribulation raptured from the evil to come. That's clear as a bell. You cannot deny this. So, Keep railing against God's character. Keep telling them, eh, you're not really a loving God. I think you're going to send us into the slaughter. You're railing against God's character, not me. You can type and argue with me. There's no pre-trib rapture. You're railing against God. That's why I think when you're foaming at the mouth post-tribber, you're not saved. And look, let me just say, some people were just taught wrong. So they're innocently believing in a post-trib rapture. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the ones typing against me. No way, we got to die for Christ, blah, blah, blah. You're going against God's character. All right, let's keep moving. Verse two, he shall enter into, who's he? The righteous man, the faithful man. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Are you getting this? Read it out of your own Bible. He will enter into peace. He'll rest in his bed. He will walk in his uprightness. We got glorified bodies. We're up in the mansions, sitting in our mansion on our bed, resting. Listen, do you know what the last trumpet means? I've been hearing this too. The last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, it's a military trumpet. It, it's uh, when Israel went to war, there'd be a trumpet blast to let them know, hey, we're going to war. And then there'd be a different trumpet blast when they're out in the war saying, come home, the war is over. That's what the last trump means. So when we hear that trumpet, our grind is over. It's over. Our journey is over. Our mission is over. We are ambassadors for Christ. God's saying, come up and rest. And of course, we're going to do all the other stuff. Marry the Lord, celebration, the whole thing. So I'll read those first two again and let it flow. The righteous vanish, escape, and no man lays it to heart. Faithful men, merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. That's not even typology. God's telling you plainly, they're taken away from the evil to come. That is a preacher rapture. And then he throws this line in. He shall enter into peace. Enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds each one walking in his uprightness. This is gold. Now, now get this part. Verse three. But draw near here. God is talking to you. He's talking to the mocker. This is you now. Shifted gears. These, these are all words in red, by the way. My Old Testament words in red when the Lord's speaking. But draw near here, you sons of of the sorceress. Now, when I go live, hold on to that verse, and I'm going to tie it back in, 
and it's going to even make more sense to you. I can't do it now. It's a different subject. But just kind of remember that one, Isaiah 57, 3. But draw near here, you sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. That's what it says. I've been telling you, Israel's a whore. They're the adulterer. They married God at Mount Sinai and then committed adultery immediately and worshipped a golden calf. Mm -hmm. They watched all the miracles of God leading them out of Egypt. And if you go back to Exodus 32, they said, the golden calf has brought us out of Egypt. That's in the Bible. They actually said that. They are an adulterous whore. So that line was kind of for them because they just missed the rapture. It's all going to tie in. Stay with me. But draw near here, you sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer, and the whore. Now look at verse 4. This is nuts. Against whom do you sport yourselves? God's talking to the mockers. Who are you mocking? That's what it means. Sport yourself. You're laughing. You're joking. You're mocking. There's no rapture. You people think you're going to escape. You've been saying that for hundreds of years. They're the mockers, 2 Peter 3, the mockers and the scoffers. Listen to what God says. God, This is God's words. Look how brilliant this is. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom make you a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Uh, that's what they're doing. Like a child, they're mocking us. God said, who do you make a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Do you wonder why I tell people they're not saved? Because they don't believe the pure words of God. They don't believe his loving character that he's not going to send the bride that he handpicks and loves into the slaughter, period. You can't get that. I don't know why. Dear God. Now listen, you can read the rest of that. I'm not going to do it for this video. Whom do you sport yourselves against? Whom do you make a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? God actually said that. Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? See, you got the false doctrine. You're in the false doctrine. So, you can't just sit back and say, eschatology is not a salvation issue. Da, 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 da. It is when you think about what you're saying as being a post-tribber or completely a rapture denier. You're going against the character of God. All right, praise God. Now look at this. All right, Micah 7. Micah chapter 7 is pure and utter gold. Micah 7, verse 1. Woe is me. Woe is me. Why is this guy saying, woe is me? We know what woe means, right? Woe is me. Down, depressed. Look what's happened to me. Woe is me. Woe is me, for I am as. So, symbology right there. For I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits as the grape gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. So when you read that, you don't even know what it means. I don't know what it means. When I broke down every word of this, it's rich, utter gold. Now get this. <laughs> Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. I'm telling you people, gathered the summer fruits is our rapture. Elul 25 is September 11th. Now, am I 100% sure it's September 11th? No, but it looks like it because at the end of Elul, they gathered the fruits, okay? They gathered the summer fruits. That's the harvest for the end of Elul, the end of summer, and they got it all in, and then ultimately they'll go to Tabernacles and have a celebration when they bring in all this crops and food and all of that. So it's a summer fruit harvest. 
We're being harvested. It very well could be 9-11, 25th of Elul, Nehemiah 6.15, the only time Elul's mentioned in the Bible. I think I said that on another video. But pay attention, please. Look at this. Our rapture's coming. This is why I'm doing these videos. This is why God's letting them catch some traction. I'm telling you. I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits as the grape gleanings of the vintage. The best of the best. You'll see that on my live. It's unbelievable. Don't miss that live that's coming up. There is no cluster to eat. See, the summer fruit is gone. He got nothing to eat. He doesn't have this basket of fruit. They're gone. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. Do you know what that means? Woe is me. He's saying, I don't have anybody to talk to. So he's not really talking about food here. He's talking about people. So again, when I broke this down, it's the people. He wants to talk and hang out with a good person. Now it gets juicy and this proves it in context. Oh, praise God. His word is so good. Verse 2, Micah 7, 2. Look at this. The good man is perished out of the earth. The good man is perished out of the earth. Here we go again. Same word. So the good man, on the, now it's the whole earth, has perished. Is God going to kill all the good men? Is he going to kill all the good men so evil can come? Yep, I'll kill all the good men and get them out of your way for you so, you know, you can worship the Antichrist. Think, think. The good man is perished out of the earth and there is none upright among men. See, all the good men are gone. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. So again, let's change the word. The good man is vanished out of the earth, escaped out of the earth. Ooh, now it makes sense. Everybody's evil after this. The good man is escaped out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. Now I'm going to take one second right here just to back that up. You look up that word, it means vanish and escape. So I'm not just making that up. Job chapter 11, verse 20. It says, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail and they shall not escape. Same word, Strong's H6. Same word, translated escape here. Do you see that? It's proof. Do not deny the word of God. Do not deny pre-tribulation rapture. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape. And their hope, get this, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. What's Job talking about? Job's the oldest book in the Bible. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape. So that's our word. It does mean escape and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. Their only hope is death. He's talking about tribulation. It'll be so horrible, people will want to die. So, a little fast forward. Look at Revelation chapter nine. Revelation nine, five and six. And to them it was given that to them that was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. Verse six, and in those days shall men seek death. Their only hope is death. And shall not find it. And shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. Desire is hope. They're hoping to give up the ghost, Job 11.20. God ties everything in together. This is gold. So death will flee from them. God won't even allow them to die to escape the torment. But you, post-tribber, you want to go into tribulation. There's no pre-trib rapture. 
Listen, if you guys don't wake up after this one, that's it. I don't know if I'm even doing any more pre-trip videos. This is enough. Okay. The good man has escaped out of the earth and there's none upright among men. They're all gone. The good man's gone. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. Verse 3, Micah 7, 3. That they may do evil, evil with both hands earnestly. Do you know what that means? I'm telling you, I already dug all this out. I can't get exhaustive, but it means open palmed hands. So during the tribulation, when you're hungry, thirsty, running from demons on the run, running from people that are trying to round you up and put you into FEMA camps, this is what they'll do. This is what it means. They, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. I looked up every word. It means, come here, open palms. Come here, I'll help you. I'll help you and then they capture you and kill you. They're doing evil with both hands. God's got it all. He's got it all in there. It's amazing. Okay, and the, the next part, it says, the prince asks and the judge asks for a reward, and the great man, he utters his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. You think, what does that mean? I'm gonna tell you what it means. The prince, the leaders, the crooked judges and the elite, like the Bill Gates that wants to depopulate the earth, it says they wrap it up. It means they're all working together against the common man to depopulate the earth and all the evil. That's what it means. They're all in on it. Verse 4, Micah 7, 4. The best of them, whoever's left, is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. Look at this. The day of your watchman and your visitation comes. This is the day of the Lord. This is the tribulation. The good man has already escaped. There's no good man left. It's all evil with both hands. The day of the, your watchman and your visitation comes. I'm a watchman. I've been shouting it from the rooftops. It's coming repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one that can save you. Tell him, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for me. I believe it. Please save me, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. You better get that done because time's running out. Look at this. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. God's telling you, you're not gonna find any good people in the tribulation. The day of your watchman and your visitation comes. Now shall be their perplexity. What a line. Not knowing what to do in a difficult situation. Perplexity. Think about it. You won't even know what to do. You're in the tribulation. There'll be no answers. Hunting you down, people will be. Now, this is gold. I'm going to try to go through it quickly. Verse five, trust you not in a friend. God says, don't trust a friend. He says he's a friend, don't trust him. Put you not confidence in a guide. That means a leader. Keep the doors of your mouth from her that lies in your bosom. Keep the doors of your mouth from her that lies in your bosom. That's your own wife. That's what he's saying. Look at this. For the son dishonors the father, the daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Jesus said that in Matthew 10, 35 and Luke 12, 53. Do you understand that? Jesus was talking about the tribulation when he spoke that in the New Testament. So now you just got a little clue how to rightly chop up the word of God. Praise God. So, What's your only hope when your enemies are all in your house? Verse seven, therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You can get saved in the tribulation. Look at verse eight. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, he knows he's gonna die. 
I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Why? Because I was a foeman at the mouth post tribber and I missed the rapture. I'll now take the indignation of the Lord because I missed it and I misjudged his character. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Praise God. Are you listening to this? This is amazing for the tribulation saint. So you do have hope in the tribulation. God is good, but you got to believe. Now you can avoid all that and be saved now. Verse 10, then she, wife in the bosom, she that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said to me, where is the Lord your God? She was mocking him. Where's your God? Where's the Lord your God? They're hunting you down, going to kill you, and I'm going to turn you in. I'm going to be the one that turns you in. So he said, my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her because she said, where is the Lord your God? My eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire in the streets. So he must get a glimpse from heaven at watching his own wife who mocked him being trodden down as mire, as dung in the streets. People, read Micah 7. I tore it all apart word for word. I obviously can't do it full on a video, but if you don't get the gist of that, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. That's a pre-tribulation rapture. Isaiah 57, 1, the righteous man vanishes. He escapes. Micah 7, 2, the good man vanishes and escapes, and all that's left is evil. It's clear. It's plain. It's simple, and it's coming. It's coming. We're about a month away, a little over a month, somewhere in there. Listen, I'm not bogged down by the exact day of the rapture. You know, I've been tracking the exact day of the rapture, but I'm not bogged down by it because I know it's coming. So it doesn't matter what day it's coming. It's here. Praise God. It's pre-trib rapture. Oh, man. Praise God. This is unbelievable. So, listen. Don't mock God. Do not mock his character and say, he's going to send us into hell. You know, tribulation hell. Don't do that. It's a mistake, and it's it's a tell. It, it exposes what you think about God. That's what I'm saying. So it's not just a doctrinal issue, blah, blah, blah. All right, let me finish it off with this. Listen, Micah 7, 1. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. That's the rapture. Look at Amos chapter 8, verse 1. Thus has the Lord God showed to me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. Same word, summer fruit. And he, said to, and he said, Amos, what see you? What do you see, Amos? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord to me, look what the Lord says, the end is come upon my people of Israel. Why did he go from summer fruit to the end has come upon my people Israel? Do you know why? Because two-thirds of Israel, they rebuild the temple Antichrist goes in that temple, and two-thirds of them worship him. Remember in John 5, Jesus said, you don't believe in me. I came in the name of the one who sent me. But when somebody comes in his own name, him you will believe. They will believe in the Antichrist, and God says, the end of my people has come. Do you know what that means? It means He's not letting them be on their own anymore. The end has come. He's going to destroy that new temple. He's going to rebuild a millennial temple, by the way, which is going to be another video that will blow your mind. 
He's going to destroy that temple, destroy the people, and put an end to all that sin and save a remnant. They will go into the millennial kingdom. So he went from a basket of summer fruit. Hey, Amos, what do you see? I said, a basket of summer fruit. And God said, the end has come upon my people, Israel. <laughs> Put it together. These are clues. This is a mystery treasure hunt of the rapture. So again, I want to say, I will announce the live that's coming up. It's going to be epic, and it's going to be epic because the word of God is epic. Not because of me, the word of God. Praise God. All glory to God. All right. Amen. I'll see you on the next one.